Hey IB Biology kids, it's time for us to do another podcast and today we started talking about abiotic factors in class but for homework we're going to be talking about living things biotic factors. This is only going to be the first part of these notes for topic 2.3, measuring biotic factors. So bio biotic ecological sampling what is really a sample when we're talking about this? Well, it's going to be a portion, a piece, or segment that represents an entire whole. So these kids right here, they're using what's going to be called a quadrat. That's this box area. And they're going to use this sample and try to extrapolate the information in here to represent the whole field. Now, why do we use a sample? Well, because usually it would be impossible to measure everything in this field. Same thing with this stream. This team is going to be measuring organisms within the net they catch but they can't catch all the organisms in the whole river first of all that would be dangerous but second of all for the organisms but it would be very hard to do so a sample is just going to be a representation of a whole um, but when we do this we have to make some assumptions because samples are just representations like we said they're not the entire thing so we have to just keep that in mind and we also have to plan accordingly and make a large number of trials so that our data is more precise and more accurate and when we're discussing we have to best as possible avoid bias when we're sampling where we pick our samples we have to do that randomly so if we go back here this team would have randomly had to select this area of the field they can't decide well I like this area best so I'm gonna measure only this spot versus the spot back there and when we're graphing, we're going to usually kind of deal with these assumptions by using error bars. And when error bars overlap too much, well, that means that the sample is probably not as reliable as we wanted. And maybe we needed more trials. So we're going to focus on a couple different types of sampling methods for living things in this class. Uh, for these notes, we're going to focus on this first one, the Lincoln Index, which is about estimating population size. Um, in the next PowerPoint, we'll talk about diversity, and we'll also talk about transects and quadrats. All of them, though, are biotic measurements for living things. So today, we're going to really be focusing on 2.3.2. Um, that's going to be what our practice IA is on, and it's going to be called Mark and Recapture, sometimes also called Capture, Mark, Release, Recapture. But that's terrible to say, so I usually will be calling it Mark and Capture, or that sort of thing. And um, we refer to this as the Lincoln Method. Uh, Peterson also helped, but we're going to call it the Lincoln Method. Um, don't write all this down and really summarize it, because it's going to be too much to write down. Um, so this method is going to involve capturing um, uh, individuals from a population of interest, for instance, this bird, um, marking them with some sort of tag. So right here, a tag's being fixed to the bird's foot that's not going to injure them, um, and releasing them back into the population for a period of time. So I capture a certain number of birds. Let's say they're like 20 birds I capture, um, and I mark all of them, and then I release them back. Then I'm going to, maybe a couple days later, recapture another set of individuals. Maybe this time I recapture 25 individuals from my population. And out of those 25, I'm going to count the number of individuals that had the tags. So how many of the individuals in the second recapture were marked and had the tag versus unmarked? And based on how many marked individuals I recaptured, maybe only three out of the 25 recaptured were marked, well, then I can estimate how big is this population. If I don't get many that came back with tags, that means my population is really big because out of the 20, they were spread so much in the population that I didn't find any, new, any of them again. But if I was able to find 10 of my original 20 that were marked, well, that means my population is pretty small because I was able to find them again. So there's a lot of assumptions that are um, within this method. Um, I have to make sure that my marked individuals are unaffected. So if I had put that tag on that bird and it had made it so the bird had trouble flying, well, it might be injured and then it wouldn't survive as well. It might be difficult to recapture, so that would affect my accuracy. I have to also make sure my marked individuals are completely mixed back in my population. And that's why I would want to wait two days. I would want to make sure that we're fully mixed. Otherwise, I'm going to randomly accidentally grab the same individuals from the first time again. And that would make it so that I would think my population was smaller than it actually was. I also have to have the probability to be same as uh, recapturing, the probability of capturing marked individuals the same as capturing 
um, any member of the population. So let's say it made it easier to see the birds with the tags and that's are going to be the ones I captured. That's not really fair and it's going to make me misestimate the numbers in my population. The sample also must be um, discrete time intervals. Um, so let's say that I take um, the birds at a particular time of day which makes it weird to catch certain types. That would be not really fair. Um, another reason is the population must be closed. If there's individuals that are migrating into my bird population um, or leaving my bird population, immigrating coming in, emigrating leaving, that's going to affect my population size and then going to affect the estimation in general. Um, if I suddenly had some birds that had lots born between my uh, original capture and then my recapture or a lot of birds died that would change the population size and it would affect my calculations as well. So here's my equation and it's gonna look scary but it's really not that bad and I'm writing it in two different forms. I have it in written form and I also have it in equation form and this is the way the bottom one the way you'll see it on your IA. So um, the total estimated population is going to be equal to the number uh, in this first sample, my original capture, times the number, total number in my second capture, my recapture, all divided by the number of marked individuals in the recapture. So how many were tagged the second time when I captured? Okay, if this way works for you, go for it. Here's another way that it might make sense if you really like using variables to represent different things. So um, n is going to once again be the total number of estimated in my population. C is going to be the number of individuals recaptured, marked, not marked. All right, that's my same as total number in sample two. M is going to be the number initially marked. That's going to be my first number one in sample one. And then R is going to be the number of individuals marked in the recapture. These are the same. In these two, actually, the C and the M are just flip-flopped in, in the top version. Not a big deal. It's going to make more sense when we do a practice problem. So here's your self-assessment to see how well you're getting this. And we'll be doing calculations together in class as well after our lab. Okay, so here's our equation, and here's our scenario. In a study in which uh, in a, a study which sampled wood lice, doesn't matter what wood lice are, in an area of woodland, the following data were collected. 85 wood lice were collected and marked in the first sample. Okay? These animals were released and 24 hours later, 99 wood lice were captured and 21 of those were marked. So I have all my important pieces of data in different colors and that's going to help us track what each thing represents within my equation. All right, now our job is to use this equation, Lincoln Index, to estimate population size. So we're looking for n. What's the estimation of population size? We have c, which is the total number of individuals recaptured the second time. That's 99. We have m, the number of individuals initially marked. That's 85. And below, at the bottom, oops. We have, let's see if we can move this so it shows up. Whoop, there we go. R, the number of marked individuals recaptured, which is 21. Okay, we have all of our data that we can just plug and charge now into this equation. All right, and that's what you would get if you put them in properly, which would give us a total when we would round up to 401 individuals. You would never want to put a percentage for your final, final answer. Why? Because you have partial organisms? No. But if you were going to use this data to average between doing this whole assessment, recapturing multiple times, you wouldn't want to round up. And that's what we're going to be doing next class. You're going to be sampling a uh, modeled fish population and you're going to need to average doing this recapture process multiple times. And we're going to practice that more in class to do your IA. Good job, guys.